Guys, it's Fonzie with DipYourCar.com. It is episode number three of the DYC Dipping Industry Podcast. Uh, with me, as always, is Adam. We do have some hot topics to cover today, some stuff that I think is going to have some value and hit home for a lot of people. Adam, what are we covering today? So, Fonzie, today we are going to have uh, Gabe, our shop manager over at the retail center in, in Coral Springs. Uh, we're going to do an interview with him about cleaning and uh Basically cleaning the DYC gun. Right, Getting sure, making sure you can get the longevity out of it. Right, right. Uh, we're going to take a couple calls, actually live calls. And that's uh, the first time that we've done first that. First time, absolutely. Everything uh, else from a Q&A point of view up till now has been via email. But the times that we don't have a live caller on an interview, like I said last episode, we're going to be taking some customer calls. And what else? Right. And then we actually got one email today um, from this gentleman named Tom. His question was so good that we decided to turn it into a full segment. Right. And then our last topic that we're going to talk about is our television show that you uh, recorded up in uh, Tennessee. Right. One thing that we wanted to share with you guys is I think a lot of you, if you if you follow me on Instagram, you saw me post some pictures in a TV studio. Uh, I went up to, I brought the DYC S8 up to Tennessee. And we filmed a show called uh, Performance TV on the Velocity Network. And this is, you know, this is going to be airing soon. We wanted to give you guys the air dates for this because a lot of our fans and customers have been asking us, when is it going to air? When is it going to air? I know, Adam, you get that, you know, a couple of times a day uh, from a customer service side since we started sharing those, those pictures. Yeah, people are really excited to see that. Um, I wanted to share... A, when it's going to be uh, airing, and B, just a little bit about it so you guys know what to expect. Um, the, the air dates for the show are December 26th, this Friday, December 26th at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Velocity Network. And it's going to be airing again on December 28th, the this coming Sunday, at 1 o'clock p- uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, again on Velocity. There's going to be a couple product highlight co- uh, commercials and stuff that they run that we filmed while we were there as well. I don't really have all the the dates for that because it is what it is. But um, I wanted to let you guys know that, you know, I had a a really fun time filming that. And what we did is a short segment. It's probably a five to eight minute segment, depending on how they edit it. And they just wanted to expose what Plasti Dip is or what Dip Your Car is to their viewers. And it, again, it's a short segment. What I would love to have done is go through the whole process. And I, lo- I know a lot of our customers would have loved if we went through the whole process, showed how to mask a car, showed how to dip a car, um, showed how to peel a car. I mean, it, we, that would have been perfect. But ideally, you only have so much time. So I brought the DYC S8 up there. It was done in the Nebula Blue. And what we did is, I th- you know, showed spraying a little bit of a wheel. We talked about the product a little bit. To, to give you guys, guys a heads up, if you are a diehard Dip Your Car fan and you've been dipping a while, there's nothing you're going to see on the show that's going to wow you. It's stuff that you know. It's general stuff. I'm sure you guys can appreciate that it's just basically a way to expose the brand and expose the products to the public. They have asked us to come back already and do a full segment. Uh, dipping an entire car uh, and that's something that we're planning on but it should be fun it should be fun to see the dip your car name out there it's just like the nascar thing the nascar thing was a big piece for us we worked on that deal for a long time and for a company who's been around essentially three years to get two full bumper to bumper uh, nascar sponsors the dyc nascars out there that was a big piece for us we've got a ton of different companies and radio stations tv uh, networks and stuff reaching out to us Ever since they saw the NASCAR thing, and it was good for the brand. And it's you know what? It's not only good for the DYC brand. It's good for the, obviously the entire dipping community. This is a community that started off, you know, in a, in a garage essentially, and now has gotten to NASCAR. And there's a lot of people that are involved in the community from a DIY point of view. There's a lot of people who have started businesses and support their families with dipping businesses now. Um, So the entire thing is just another stepping stone. So keep your eyes on Velocity Network the 26th this Friday at 1 p.m. and the 28th this Sunday at 1 p.m. It should be our first national TV exposure for Dip Your Car. So you know the next question that people are going to ask you, right? What? When are we going to SEMA? You know what? You know, I'm really glad you brought that up because that wasn't even on the show sheet. Um, we were supposed to be at SEMA this year. We had a booth. We had a uh, 30 by 30 booth. We were going to bring two cars in, fully dipped, obviously. We had everything set up, paid for up front, 
and we got bumped. I'm just going to tell you straight up. We got our spot bumped from the main booth in the restyling section to across the street in a secondary building. We had the 3D model of our of our booth done. We had everything ready to rock. And when I, when I got an email saying, Fonzie, giving you a heads up, you're no longer in the spot that you signed up for. Now you're in across the street in essentially, not even going to make a comment on it, but not in an <laughs> ideal area. So I actually, I didn't know what to do. We had never been to SEMA before as, as a promoter. I contacted the guy who designed our booth and I said, hey, here's where we just got reassigned. Uh, should I still spend the money on this? Because obviously, as you guys can imagine, to, to rent a booth or to get a booth at SEMA that big, to get a three, you know, an entire booth designed professionally, it's not cheap. So I asked this guy, should we follow through with this? And he told me straight up, he's like, look, this is a big sale for me. I want to make the sale and do your booth. But I'm telling you, I've been to SEMA nine times. The location that they mapped out for you, it's not, it would not be worth the investment. He's like, I'm telling you, wait, just wait. So we reluctantly pulled out and we used those funds to, to get our booth set up for next year. But we did miss out on SEMA this year. And actually, it's a good thing that you brought that up because a lot of people ask about it. I was going to say, yeah, pe- especially as it was down coming up or right after, oh, hey, were, were you guys there? Or I didn't see you guys there. I expected to see you guys there. I know a lot of people were kind of excited to uh, meet you or, or stop in and, and see the product firsthand. Yeah, we were really excited to be there. We had a lot of really cool things that we were going to to show off and you know what maybe everything happens for reason. i'm just that guy everything happens for a reason i I stick with that and next year we should have some very impressive things to show off so i I think it was for the best even though we kind of wish we were there a guy that we have with us right now is uh one of the magic guys that works behind the scenes at dip your car he's a guy that makes a very big impact on what we do on a daily basis, um, somebody that you may not see too often. Actually, you probably see him in some of the some of the videos in yeah, the background, yeah. and and actually on uh, the Dip Your Car community page. Yeah, he's very active on the uh, on our social media. Uh, Gabe, our shop manager and retail manager, is here. Gabe, say say hello. Hey, what's up, guys? So the reason why we have Gabe on today is because, and I will admit this openly to anybody. I don't, at this point in the game or at this point in the business process, I don't um, mask our cars. I don't prep our cars hands-on most of the time. I don't manage our our gun setup. I don't clean the guns afterwards. This is all done by Gabe and his team. Basically, the car, if we're going to do a car for video, we drop the car off that morning. Gabe gets on it. He starts with his team masking, prepping, going through the whole process, making sure it's done perfectly. And then we get the, uh, the dip done, we shoot the video, I show up, it's ready to go. We shoot the video, we dip the car, and then that gun, everything there, the materials are left in Gabe's hands. One of the reasons, main reasons we wanted to have him on is because people, a lot of people use the DYC gun, th- thousands essentially. And it's a plastic gun, it works really well. And it is a long-term piece if it's maintained properly. And only if it's maintained properly. So if we have, if we've used essentially what, three guns now? Yeah. If we've used three guns for going on nine months straight and they all work well enough for us to use in the videos, that means we're doing something right. Essentially, Gabe is doing something right. And we want to make sure that everybody out there knows what he's doing. So just to keep it simple, Gabe, before we shoot a, uh, a video before we shoot a dip. What do you do to the gun to make sure it's ready to rock and roll uh, before we go ahead and start using it? Well, of course, you want the gun to be clean. That's the number one thing. You don't want any contaminate. You don't want any random pieces of dry dip. You don't want any microfiber things that you were wiping the gun out with. You don't want that stuck in the gun because that'll end up on your dip job. Right. And that's going to ruin the whole thing. <clears throat> so as far as the gun, I mean... I know that I've seen you load it up. I've seen you do some test sprays. When you're doing a test spray, what are you really looking for when you shoot it on a wall? What's going to make you say, yes, this thing's cleaned, it's perfect, it's ready to go? And what's going to, what are you going to see as red flags that are going to say, wait, this thing's not ready to go? Well, the main thing I look for is that perfect football-shaped pattern, pattern that you want to see with a spray gun. 
And you also want to look at the droplet size. You want to make sure the droplet sizes are even. If they're not even, you're not going to get an even coat. You're not going to even pass. Right. That, that whole surface is not going to ever wet out correctly. You're not going to get that leveling that you need. Yeah, the, the, one of the biggest problems is uh, something like a spray pattern that's top heavy or bottom heavy. And so if you, just so that everybody knows, we can't go through every single detail or troubleshooting, but if you pull that gun out and you spray a couple test patterns on the wall, if you see a top heavy teardrop shape, where are you going from there? Well, right, right from there, I'm going to go straight to the air cap and I'm going to make sure that all of those orifices are completely clear and clean. Because if they're not, you're never going to get an even spray pattern. Okay, so we're going to check the air cap. We're going to make sure it's perfectly clean. Let's say we're, you know, we're, we're done with the dip job. I pass over the guns to you. I head back to the office, um, and you're, you've got these guns now. You've got the gun. Maybe we used one for the color base. Maybe we used one for pearls or the top coat. You've got these sitting there. They've still got dip in them. What are you going to do with them to make sure that they work again for the next dip job? I'm going to immediately start wiping out all the excess dip. And then I'm going to take some thinner, get my naphtha, and start running it through the gun. That's the number one thing. You want to run it through the gun about half a quart through. And then afterwards, unscrew that hopper, get, get the white gasket out, get the straw out, start getting your brushes. Dip them in some thinner, go to all the different orifices that are on the gun, make sure they're perfectly clean, and then that gun's going to get ready to dry out. Once it's dried out, you can put it back together, grease your, grease your O-rings, grease your seals, put the gun back together, put it on the shelf. You're ready for the next job. So as far as thinners, I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, I, I, there's a lot of thinners out there. There's min mineral spirits and stuff. What, I mean, we have essentially a 50-gallon drum of naphtha in-house, right? Yes. And that's basically what you're going to use f to clean the gun, nothing else. That's correct. And I know that there's probably a lot of different types of brushes out there that are going to work, but we use and sell, obviously, the Earlix gun cleaning kit that comes with those wire brushes. And essentially what you're saying is you're dipping those into thinner and you're using those to scrub out all the different parts of the gun. Exactly. All of the DYC cleaning, or the Earlix 3500 cleaning kit cleans the DYC gun perfectly. I don't need anything else. There's no other brush I need to go to Home Depot or even go to Walgreens and get a toothbrush. That's not even needed. Mm -hmm. Everything we need is sold at DYC. So basically, you know, there's a lot of people out there, and I've seen this before, and I've even done this before. A lot of people say, well, you take pieces off and you let them soak in thinner for a while, loosen them up and stuff. What are your thoughts on actually th uh, soaking those plastic pieces in thinner? I honestly don't like soaking any parts in thinner. Maybe I'll dip it in there just to help break up the uh, dip with some solvent, but then after that, it's just all about the brushes and just get in those bristles to get in there and deep clean those uh, components of the gun. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times what we'll see is we will, we've, when we've done this, like I said, we, we admit to actually making that error sometimes. You let those plastic pieces soak and saturate in the thinner, and you think it's going to make it easier to clean. But what happens is that harsh solvent is actually going to, it's going to beat up the plastic a little bit, right? I mean, Yeah, it definitely warps it. Yeah, it's going to make them warp. It's going to make them softer. It's going to make them lose shape. So uh, are you, at this point, you, you know, you put the gun back together and you're just letting it air dry? Yeah, let it air dry because that's going to allow those plastics to actually let any solvents they absorb to release those solvents, and that's going to bring the plastic back to where it originally was. Yeah, So, and, and I've seen you do this a million times, and we've worked on it together. I mean, it's just gotten to the point with the business that, you know, I have the, the luxury, I guess, to have this supportive team. I show up, the car's ready to rock and roll, we get the video filmed, and I'm back out the door. And all this stuff is left in Gabe's hands from the prepping, the cleaning, um, and, and everything. He's a huge, huge uh, asset to the team. And one of the reasons why we wanted to share this with you is because it works. We've, like I said, we've had three, like, old, reliable, old, faithful Earlix guns that we've been using for just going on nine months now. And yes, there are pieces to the part, to the guns that break down and need to be replaced. The needle seal is one of them. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And that's that small little white seal at the back of the needle. So my question would be, what what would be a sign that would make you think, oh, you know what, it's time to change that little needle seal out? Well, once you start experiencing any leaking coming around the trigger area, that's how you know that seal is pretty much done for. You might take the gun apart, and when you take it apart, you might see that the seal has expanded a little bit. That's perfectly normal. Just let the needle dry out. It'll shrink back down. Throw some grease on there. This way it slides nice and easily. Put it back together, and you're good to go. And you're greasing that needle seal and that shaft area every single time every after we use it? Every single time after we use it. And then also to ease that brass cap with the O-ring, I'm going to put some grease on that O-ring to make sure it's going to slide on the 
on the front of that gun easily. Yeah, and if you guys can, uh, you know, some of the guys who've used the Earlix gun a lot can easily visualize this. When you take all the plastic pieces off the front of the gun, and I'm talking about the the little screw piece, I'm talking about the um, the little fan selector, the air cap, and even that brass piece, you're going to see that little cylinder inside where that brass piece sits. And I'll, I've seen it before, that that cylinder there, that plastic sleeve that that brass piece fits into, we've seen that crack. And and you and I, Gabe, have gone over this a bunch of times. What, what we're going to see happen is on that brass piece, that O-ring expands as more dip goes around it, it comes in contact with the solvent. And when that expands and you jam that back into that plastic sleeve, which essentially is softened from the dip that we've been using, right? Yeah, that's correct. And then you're gonna, you can potentially split that piece. So at the end of the day, we're looking at a do-it-yourself gun. It, it is a beginner level gun that can be used for absolutely awesome results, but it, it's not perfect. It has to be maintained. Even a $500, $600 HVLP gun, a professional metal gun has parts to it that need to be maintained, they need to be greased, in order to get the longevity out of the unit. And granted, the DYC gun is a little bit less expensive, and that's the idea. It's an all-in-one kit for a do-it-yourselfer. But at the end of the day, you can't just spray that gun, put it back on the shelf, leave it there for four or five weeks, and then go back to it and expect it to be in working order. No, you can't. You cannot just leave it there because you're going to dry it up. It's going to dry rot out, and that solvent's going to just eat that plastic up, and you're going to ruin a gun. And, and one thing I see you do all the time that we definitely want to touch on is the cleaning out that air filter on the back of the DYC turbine. How often are you doing that? I do that sometimes even in the middle of the job. I'll take it out and just make sure it's operating or perfectly clear so we have the turbine operating right where we need it. Right. Well, that's that's something that we wanted to share with you guys. Again, we're going to have Gabe on again um, in a week or two to share with you what we do to prep. And we're going to touch on a couple of things today that actually are really keen on, on, you know, and really rely on the prepping of the car. But again, Gabe's the guy who's putting the hands on, on the car for the prep. So all these cars that you see us do in, at DYC through our Facebook, our social media, our videos, all these cars, Gabe has his hands on them before anybody else does. So, again, he's a big piece. Uh, we really appreciate all the hard work that you do and, uh, and appreciate you having on the show. Yeah, for sure, for sure, Fonzie. I love, I love being on the show, love being part of the team. There's nothing I could ever ask for. So, Fonzie, we got such a good question this week and a subset of questions there, thereafter on one of the emails from Tom. Uh, we decided to devote a whole segment to that. Yeah, when, when you brought that email question to me and said, you know, this would be good for the Q&A section, there are, there's so much there. There's so many answers, you know, there's so much to talk about, and there's a lot of people that would probably benefit about this because I know this is a topic that a lot of people think about, and there's a lot of questions, and there's not a lot of answers to it. So I think devoting a segment on, on this episode to this topic, there's a lot of value there. And not only that, I think it probably – piqued some people's interest uh, during episode two of when you were talking about the start of DYC and, and your hard work and how it all really paid off. And I think people want to almost piggyback off that and say, well, you know, I have that kind of personality and I enjoy dipping and I would love to make a career out of it. So that's kind of where we're going with this is Tom wanted to know, how do I start my dipping company? And he does have a bunch of questions laid out. So I think the best thing that we can do instead of me just going you know, on a, on a whole rant about this is to just hit me with every question he has. And hopefully we can outline this entire, you know, this entire topic and, and give some people something that they can follow. Right. And, and obviously the process is, you know, different if you're becoming an, want to become an authorized installer or drop shipper, reseller, or if you're just looking to run a dipping business on your own. Yeah. And, and what we're talking about today is uh, this is not, this is not a pitch for a dip your car authorized installer or reseller. This is specifically about the question, how do I start a dipping company or how do I make this into a business? And that's what we're going to focus on. So Tom's first question is, how do I get started? You know, I think the first thing that you need to do if you're interested in starting a dipping business is ask yourself how serious you are about it and ask yourself what your goal is because I know that our demographic, the people that we really strike here with is, you know, maybe 18 to, to 35 year old men and, and, and women or, you know, but in that age group and a lot of people look at dip, they dip their car, 
They dip a couple of their buddies' cars, and then they look around and say, hmm, I could probably make some money doing this. And you need to make a decision. Am I am I trying to do this part-time? Am I trying to pick up a dip job every once in a while and make a couple bucks? Or am I trying to make this a business? Because there's a difference between a business and a hobby. And I say this all the time. And the word professional gets thrown around, uh, thrown around a lot in the dipping industry. And I think that there needs to be a separation when you when you say that you're going to start a business. You need to decide, do I want to do this as a hobby and make some side money? Or do I want to make this a business? And if you decide you want to make this a business, is and that's what we're going to focus on today, you better be prepared. There's a lot that goes into that. There's time. There's money you know, that you need to invest. There's a lot of energy. And it really does need to be something that you put, that you put a lot of focus into. So before... You do anything, you need to make that decision. Is this a business, something I'm going to pay my, you know, pay my bills with, support my family with, or is this a, a hobby that I'm going to make some bucks with? So what's the uh, best way to enter a market? I think the best way to get involved in the dipping industry, if you want to you know, start a business doing installations, is obviously you need a facility. You're not going to dip out of your house. If you're dipping out of your house, I'm not, I wouldn't put that in the bucket of, a, a true business because in my opinion you know the, the dipping industry has gained a lot of credibility in the past three years and at this point there are some really legitimate companies literal companies out there that are doing dipping jobs on a daily basis there are companies that have not only the social media lockdown the advertising and promotion lockdown they have the facility and customer service lockdown you know if you're going to get started, the first thing you need is a facility and you need somewhere to get the job done and you need to make sure it's compliant and you need to make sure it's an area where you can do this type of work in. And then you need to get your materials, you need to get your equipment, and basically you need to then start looking about how you can get people in your door. And how are you going to go about doing that? I think the first thing, and I can, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this and I'm sure there's a lot of people that can add some value to this conversation, but I will speak on the way that I did it and, and what worked for me. Because you have to remember, when I opened my shop in 2012, late 2011, early 2012, nobody knew what Plasti Dip was. There was no Google Plasti Dip and find it on millions of cars. There wasn't dip your car. There wasn't a social media uh, forums and Facebook groups. None of that existed. So when I was asking people to come in and let me spray an unknown, essentially unknown coating on their car and trust me that it's going to look good, trust me that it's going to be durable, and trust me that it's going to be peelable and not damage their car. That was a, a heck of a mountain to climb. That was that was something that I really had to fight. And I don't think that fight, that specific fight, is ever going to have to be fought again because right. of what everyone's right. done in the past several years. The, the thing that I did is I started small. I got as many small projects done as I possibly could, as many wheel jobs, as many um, trim jobs, as many emblem jobs as I could. And, yeah, they, they don't bring in a ton of money. If you get a, the right volume, it does. But what it does is it exposes the product, and it allows people to start trusting you. And what I found was I would do uh, an individual's wheels and – Three weeks later, he'd call back, hey, man, you know, I got my wheels done. I'm thinking about changing the color of my wheels again. I saw this new color you came out with. Or, hey, you know, I, I heard that you can do this on whole cars. I had it on my wheel for, wheels for a while. I'm thinking about going matte black or something like that. So what it, when you get all those small jobs racked up, do as many as you can the first several months. Put the pro product on as many people's cars as will allow you to for the first couple months. And the way I thought about it is just that law of averages. It's a numbers game just like anything else. You dip somebody's wheels. How many people are they going to come in contact with and talk about it? Think about if everybody listened to this, if you've ever dipped anything, think about the first time you dipped your wheels, your emblems, your whole car, and how many people did you tell? And, you know, what we get that, that conversation on the phone quite often is, uh, oh, you know what? Nobody here does this, or I'm the first person in my area to do it, you know, um, so, and, and people saw my car and they love it. So, you know, whether it's friends or neighbors or family. You're going to talk about it. Right. You're going to show people and people are going to ask you, dude, I saw your car yesterday. Now you have black wheels. Now you have, you know, gray wheels or blue wheels. What the, what the heck's going on with that? So word of mouth is huge. The first thing I would say is get, get as many jobs done as you can. And now that, the, now that dipping whole cars is pretty standard, 
you're going to get some whole card dips too. And what I will tell you about that is take your time. The first several whole card dips you do, there are no excuses. You're doing a paid service for somebody. They're coming to you. They're expecting the same service as they would get anywhere else. They go get their car wash. They're expecting a perfect wash, and they don't expect any scratches on their vehicle. They go get new tires, same thing. They're coming to you for an automotive service. They expect to be handled properly. They expect the end result to be done. The first couple cars you do, there is no excuse saying, oh, yeah, 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 that, that's got a little texture on it, but I'm new at this, and the next time it'll be good because they paid you for that. So really, really pay attention to your first several customers. Um, and then once once you get that, that ball rolling and you have some steady business, how do you keep it steady? You know what? That is going to come down to the to obvious points. The first being you have to do a good job. The work that you do has to be quality because if you, it's just like if you do a really good job, like I mentioned, on somebody's wheels and they're going to go out and they're going to tell 25 people about it on average, you do a bad job, I bet you they're going to tell even more than that. Right. They're going to be like, you know what? It, they're going to share it on their Facebook. They're going to share it on the forums. They're, if you do a bad job, people are going to hear about it. So if you're going to be trying to retain business and keep it going, we'll talk about advertising and promotion in a second. But first and foremost, all of the jobs that you do have to be quality. And you know, you can tell. You can tell when you look at pictures even. You know what I mean? There's there's pearl jobs out there that are being done by essentially professional shops that need a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of fine-tuning. And then there's pearl jobs out there and, and dip jobs that you look at, and not only is the presentation perfect from a social media and a picture point of view, but the execution is is just really on point. And that's exactly what people should be paying for. So you have to make them happy. They have to come for a service. They have to have that that service executed exactly the way they expect it to be. Right, and then once you get the ball rolling, you had touched a little bit about how we we're going to talk about advertising. Once you get that ball rolling and you're saying, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm making some money on the side, but you know, let me put my eggs into this basket or, you know, is it time to make that decision? Then you have to go out there and market your, your business. You know, how would you go about doing that? That's, that's really two parts. And the first is, and you guys know, I'm going to say this and it's not, it's only because I really truly believe it. The first thing that you would have to do to get the, the amount of exposure that you want is to become a dip your car authorized installer. There's nothing else on this planet that you can do, whether you like dip your car or not, whether you see value in it or not, the truth is, the facts are, there's nothing else you can do on this planet that will get you more exposure as a dipping company and more traffic than being a DYC installer. There's just floods of traffic that hit our website every day that click on those links of those states every day. We get calls and emails from people that want us to do their installations, and then we have to send them somewhere, and of course we're going to send them to installers. So the first thing to do is, is talk to Dip Your Car, find out what the criteria is to become an authorized Dip Your Car installer. And I'll be honest, I'm going to say this right now. If you're serious about being in a business, and I'm saying serious, the criteria that you're going to need to become a DYC installer, you're already going to have it. You're going to have a, a business license. You're going to have a tax ID. You're going to have a proper facility. You're going to be able to show us pictures that show your, you know, your credibility to, to follow that that photo submission checklist. Um, and you'll work with Bennett on that. But that's the first, the the first and the best and most immediate thing that you can do. But it, it does not stop there. You have to run it like a business, just like everybody else. You, ha you know, a business. If you start a restaurant, you can't just make good food and expect people to show up. You're going to get a little bit of traction for that. But you have to do some local advertising, whether it's a newspaper or I've seen Craigslist. Facebook, Google AdWords is, is big. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but you have to be willing to throw some money at it. You can't just set up a shop, do some good dip jobs, set up, you know, sign up with DYC and then expect to flourish and be this booming installation business that's going to continue to grow. You have to put some time into it. And and if you want some specific ideas about how to market you know, there's different ways of getting those ideas. You can you can call up and talk to one of us at Dipper Car. You can talk to Bennett or Brad or or Andrew and find out what some of these other guys are doing and spending the money on. I mean, I would definitely focus on Google AdWords. I mean, if you think about it, if somebody's figuring out Dip and they're learning about Dip for the first time, and you live in Houston, 
one thing that you may find somebody doing is Google Plasti Dip Installation Houston. And granted, you're going to find the Dip Your Car Installer site come up, but you're also going to find guys that put money into to Google AdWords and have that ad pop up and, and say, you know, dipping installations in Houston. So make sure that you put a marketing plan together and, and be, be prepared to put a little bit of money into it, just like any other business. So then then you're set up and, uh, you know, you're getting that steady stream. Um, there's There's some, I know there's some, not necessarily installers, but like you had touched on in the intro saying, you know, you started doing emblems and wheels and, and getting a vibe going that way. Um, what are some things that you think you definitely need to offer if you're looking to do this in a professional manner? And then maybe some services that you don't need to necessarily offer. Well, we see a lot of combo shops. They'll be doing dipping in window tint, dipping in powder coating, dipping in car detailing, and I think any of those work hand in hand. As long as you have the skill set, the the equipment, and everything to get each one of those services done properly. What I wouldn't suggest is starting a shop and offering a whole bunch of different services and not being a master of any of them. Because then you're just going to do a bunch of things at a C level or a D level instead of doing just a couple of things at a B plus or an A level. So, you know, at the end of the day, either just focus on dipping or, or bring in a couple of things that, that you can do, but know that you can do them well. So all in all, I, I would just want to stress the point that if you are thinking about doing dipping as a business or as a source of income, there's nothing wrong with doing it as a hobby or as a service out of your house or wherever it is, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But if you know, there's different there's different sides to this to the tracks. If you're going to do that, that's fine, and that's what it's probably always going to stay as. If you want to run it as a business, as a credible, you know, income driving business, be prepared to treat it as that. All right, I think it's time for uh, basically the, uh, one of our favorite parts of this show when we get to interact with the listeners and, and the fans and customers. And this is the first time that we're actually going to be taking live calls on the show instead of just reading off the emails, right? Right, that's right. So let's get started with that. Okay. Hey there, Mike. You're on with Fonzie and Adam. How you doing, guys? What's up, Mike? How are you? I'm great. So what what question do you have for us, brother? Well, uh... My wife and I came and visited the retail store over the summer. We enjoyed ourselves, had a great time. I was amazed at the amount of product you had. So my question was, are there any plans to extend into the retail DYC store market? Uh, demand is still high, and if DIC installers have the means and the clientele, is the retail, is the retail store option in the works or, or no? That's actually a great question. And, you know, from to be totally transparent with you, from DYC's point of view, you know, there's not a lot of direct competition for us out there as far as specifically speaking to the retail DIY market. Um, but what does, you know, what we do go up against sometimes is is certain retail stores out there that may be carrying like black plastic dip or some of those simpler stuff. And there's a lot of demand for the things that we have that nobody else has. You know, we have a lot of those exclusive colors and those simply aren't available on the retail shelves right now. So you're hitting the nail on the head as far as one of the things we're going to be focusing on in 2015. But it's a two-part answer. The first is, first and foremost, any DYC reseller or installer at this time has full ability to set up an in-house retail center. They can set up shelves, they can stock product, they can sell as much as they want in person. They have that opportunity. But the the second part to that is we're actually going to be looking to start setting up some official DYC retail locations. So Mike, you went to the one over in uh, Coral Springs, correct? So that one has dipyourcar.com, big logo on the front of the building. You can tell as soon as you walk in, it's a Dip Your Car branded store. It's listed on the website, which gets it a ton of traffic. So the difference between essentially a reseller setting up their own shop, like Super Dips, having DYC product, and an official DYC retail store is that we're going to be setting up more of those official retail stores. They are going to be listed as far as their location on the website. You, just like now, you can find a DYC installer by state. We're going to be building out DYC retail centers listed by state as well so we can get more of the products into the hands of the local people quicker and without having to worry about the shipping. 
And that's uh, actually one thing that we mentioned on the phone to a lot of customers that call, hey, I'm really interested in your product, but you know, shipping time or, or things of that nature, you guys are so far away from me. One thing that will always kind of lead the customer to is, well, you know, we have the find a local installer on the uh, website. And like Fonzie mentioned earlier, you know, some of them will resell products. Some of them just do the installations. So, hey, you know, this company is in your location. Stop by there. Give them a call. See if they'll resell product because a lot of them will. Yeah, that actually happens quite a bit, Mike. When people call up um, and you know they want a certain product, they're in a tight spot. And Mike, I know I've followed your work. I know that you do quality stuff, and you know you know the deal. If you're in a tight spot and you happen to need some product, whatever that product is. It, sometimes it just doesn't cut it to order it online and wait for the shipping. You, you know, these are people's cars. They may plan on dipping that car and getting back on the road the next day, getting to work, picking their kids up, whatever it happens to be. So having that product available is, is key. And right now, as of today, if somebody calls and, and needs that stuff immediately, uh, we refer them immediately to their to their closest DYC reseller or installer. Is is setting up a DYC retail location something that you that you guys are thinking about moving forward? Well, we're trying to get to, again, the installer status first, but then, yes, that'd be great. Okay. Well, we, there is going to be some specific criteria that we're looking for. I mean, remember, this is going to be a dip-your-car retail center. So with that, I want people and we want people to have the same experience that they felt when you walked into our retail store in Coral Springs. All the products need to be there in stock presented well the theme and the brand everything has to be consistent so um, if you are interested in becoming a dyc retail center come 2015 you can email bennett at dipyourcar.com or andrew at dipyourcar.com or even dan over at dipyourcar.com and just express that interest we're going to take you know we're going to take our time and and guys like you mike that are that are in the community and we see you active on facebook and and you have the credibility already those are the people that we're going to be looking to work with as we expand our brand moving forward absolutely thanks guys i appreciate that yeah you're very welcome mike appreciate you participating dude have a great night thank you guys dip on yes sir hey there matt how's it going doing well how are you pretty good pretty good 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 where are you calling uh fonzie and i from uh, Fort Myers. Okay, right down the road, right down the road. Yeah, so, uh, right across the state. Gotcha. So, um, you had some good questions about um, not only some issues that you're running into, but also some yeah. prevention, correct? Mm hmm. Correct. Yes, correct. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and ask uh, Fonzie those questions? All right, so bubbles. I have on my car, on like on the bottom side skirt, after I sprayed over the weekend, I noticed a bubble popped up. What's the easiest way to fix that? Hey, Matt, it's Fonzie. How are you? Pretty good. Well, uh, first of all, what, what did you apply on your car? How many coats do you have on there? I Well, I have a base of uh, olive, uh, not olive blueberry, uh, uh, camo green, oh, and then olive blueberry on top. I put four gallons of the camo green and three ga or two gallons of clear and a gallon of gloss of the olive blueberry. Okay. And the area where there's a bubble? Is that mm -hmm. near any specific uh, uh, any any edges? Is it near the, uh, the maybe the edge of a panel? Is it near any edges? Yeah, at all? it's like right on the top uh, part of the uh, side skirt panel on the driver's side door. Okay. Now I've seen people fix these bubbles a couple different ways. One of the ways that I've seen that I, that I'm not a big fan of is people actually throwing some thinner back there. Whether you have naphtha yeah. or some type of thinner, the problem that I mm -hmm. have with using thinner is that it is going to reliquify the back side of the dip but it's mm -hmm. so corrosive to the dip it hits the dip so hard that a lot of times people will put some thinner back there squirt it back there mist it back there and then go to press the dip up against the surface to rebond it and the thinner will mm -hmm. hit the dip so hard that it's going to it's going to warp the dip it could wrinkle the surface and sometimes even melt right through so what i like to do yeah. if we have a customer that brings a, a car to the shop and they're having that problem and they want us to help them i like to use some leftover dip preferably not a mm. uh, dip that's that's got pearl in it but maybe something mm. that you use as for your base coat and try just to yeah. get a little you really don't need a lot just a little bit back there and that's not only going to reliquify the back side of the dip but it's also going to add obviously some more dip and give it a nice fresh bond so you want to put a little bit back there and then press the dip up against the side of the car 
and and just kind of keep it stationary there. And then you're just going to okay. leave it there for about, you know, 20, 30 seconds as, as much as you can and then step cool. away and see if that did the job. All right, cool. And now how can you prevent that from happening? Well, you know, Plasti Dip essentially is gripping the surface of, your, of mm -hmm. the car. And and just like right. anything else out there, it's not perfect. It's only as good yeah. as the application. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. a couple oh, yeah. So there's a couple things that you have to keep in mind when you're going to dip your car to prevent that. The first thing is, and, and it's the killer for everything, is moisture. And that doesn't just mean the, you know, the moisture that you can see. It's multi-leveled. Mm -hmm. It's the moisture that's in the cracks between the car. It's the moisture as far as humidity. So the first thing that I would always do, and this is what we do when we dip our cars. If we have a car and we're prepping for a video, what we'll do is we'll give that car a full wash from head to toe. And okay. then we're going to leave that car and we're going to leave it indoors for 24 hours. I know okay. that not everybody can do that. I know that a lot of times yeah. you're dipping a car that you have to drive, right? Yep. So you, a lot of people aren't going to be able to, to, to pin their car up for 24 hours. But if you're going to do a full wash on the car, give it as long as you possibly can. Pop all the doors open, pop the trunk open, and give it some time to breathe. Because a lot of okay. times when you get that, that bubbling, it's going to happen because there's moisture trapped in a door handle or, or in between the seams on some panels or something like that. So moisture yeah, is the biggest I actually... issue had some issues when I did the base of the camo green. I did that first like a couple of weeks before I did the uh, blueberry. And then, then the passenger door handle where the where the door handle comes in contact with the door was peeling and bubbling right there. Yeah. So, so. we definitely want to attack moisture first and foremost. And don't ever yeah. think that, you know, if you dip your car or you wash your car and an hour later it's going to be dry. It has to be blown yeah, dry. Obviously it will be. Yeah. And the, mm -hmm. sec the second piece to that is, is cleaning it. And that doesn't yeah. mean spray some pre-dip on a, on a rag and wipe the car down. That means even mm -hmm. if you washed it, there has to be every contaminant, every drop of oil, every, what it, wax, whatever it is, has to be completely mm -hmm. gone. So my all I can do is suggest to do what we do the best that you can. And what we do yeah. is we, we take pre-dip and a microfiber towel. And instead of obviously spraying the pre-dip onto the car, because you don't want to oversaturate the moisture in those cracks, you want to spray it onto yeah. the rag, get it, ni you know, get it nice and wet on the rag, and you want to pick one single panel at a time. Don't try to wipe down the right side of the car and then the left side of the car and then the front. Mm -hmm. Try to identify one single panel, whether that's as big as a door or a rocker panel or a trunk lid. Focus on one panel at a time. And small circular motions on the car to scrub it. And I, and don't be afraid to use pressure. You have to use okay. pressure. If there's wax on that car, if there's oil on that car or debris, pressure is necessary to get that stuff off. It can't be a ginger wax. You have to get yeah. or a ginger wipe down. You have to get it done right. So small circular patterns, wipe the entire car down panel by panel. And then I'm going to say it. I know it sounds redundant and a lot of people are going to scoff at this. We do the whole thing over again and i know yeah. it takes time dude but you know what you're putting passion into this job you're spending money on the yeah. product you want to drive mm -hmm. around and you want the car to be something you're proud of right oh yeah it's a head turner already like it's i don't see many cars i've only seen like a couple cars in the series that are dipped and like I get head turners at every light it's, it's crazy Exactly. And, and we want you to have that. That's the reason why we supply these products to you guys. That's why we put so much time and energy into this because we want you guys to be proud of it. We want you to enjoy it and we want you obviously to get a value out of your purchase. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if it does take extra time, if it does take extra effort, I, I say put, put that time and effort into it. Wipe the entire yeah, thing exactly. down perfectly and then do it again because you know what no matter how many cars you've dipped no matter how much of a professional or an expert you think you are or even if it's your first time everybody misses spots and sometimes oh, yeah. missing a spot that's just just enough to cause a lift yep mm -hmm. does that make sense well uh, oh yeah it makes perfectly good sense uh and actually i should have done that i should have actually took my more time and put the dip uh, pre dip and cleaned it a little bit more and let it dry a little bit more probably well, how many cars have you dipped before this one? Honestly, this is my first one. I've been doing emblems and rims. I know that's like a little bit easier, but yeah, this is my actual first uh, full car dip. Okay. Well, everybody goes through their first one, and I promise you the next one's going to come out even better. It's, you know, think oh, about yeah. it like this, dude. 
you painted a whole car. I know that dipping is yeah. so is so <laughs> incredible. It's big deal, dude. It's I know dipping is so is getting more mainstream and it's getting you know people are getting kind of jaded by it because everyone a lot of people are doing it, but it's a huge project. It's a huge project. Oh, I mean, it's, in, it's incredible stuff. It, it's I can peel it off, put a new color on, and it's like the next couple of days. Exactly. You keep changing it whenever you want to. It's crazy. Well, we're we're glad that we could help you out and and answer your questions. Thank you so much for participating um, in, in the Dipcast. And if you have any other problems, any other questions, you know how to get a hold of us. Okay. I do. Cool. Thanks, Tom. To have a good evening. You too, brother. Take care. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. Guys, I think that's pretty much running up to the point of, of how far we want to go with the length of these things. I know that you guys are probably listening to this in the gym. Of in course, the, the gym is the first one that you lead off with. Well, there, huh? I, you know, the gym or wherever else you are and I got they, somebody while you're that, driving. I got somebody that uh, said they were listening while they were masking off their, their Hummer when they were getting ready to do a dip job. I was uh, like, well, yeah, that's an appropriate... Be, time this would be awesome background audio for for while you're dipping but you know we want to make sure that we don't go too far everybody's got an attention span and we do have some very unique and interesting topics for next week i know we have an interview scheduled for next week um that's going to be very interesting to specifically the pro guys and the more advanced guys out there so we're going to get that done and what else do we have for next week i think we're also going to probably touch on some some micro flakes and you know uh, comments and questions or you can fill us in on some micro flakes and why maybe we haven't been doing too many videos using the micro flakes yeah the micro flakes are kind of like the stepchild of, of the additive section and, and they are very cool and there's there's reasons why we're not using them yet and why we're not promoting them yet and we'll make sure we dive into those as well so for everybody out there have a really beautiful happy holiday merry christmas this is fonzie from dip your car and adam we'll see you on the next one